Hi, so our topic for today is plantar fasciitis. Uh, lately, I'm getting my clinic a lot of patients that are suffering from uh, plantar fasciitis and even over the years. So uh, I found that actually using Yamamoto New Scale Acupuncture method, also certain points to treat it and also the diagnosis allows me to get a better treatment in and help the patient uh, recover and get the uh, inflammation down and back walking on his feet. A lot of times plantar fasciitis is caused, I found due to strain on the uh, soleus muscle, the gastrocnemius muscle. But in general, I would like to also show you how this could be a whole problem throughout the body in different areas, which is causing strain on the area of the plantar fascia, which is called a plantar fasciitis, but we'll get into that uh, later on. So first let's look at a couple of points here that are very, very useful. Like it's, these points are needled uh, epsilateral uh, to the, uh, uh, plant, the where you have in the inflammation, the plantar fasciitis. And I'd like to remember, remind you that these points are also very, very useful also for heel spur as well. Uh, so the first point I like to speak to you about is actually uh, what we see here. Uh, you see here written as extra foot point. This is the first point that is uh, very, very useful. It's located on the zygomatic bone, on the hairline. Okay, if we would have a hairline, we'd have a hairline here of the uh, sideburn, and it's located on the on the zygomatic bone, where around here you have stomach uh, seven, just for that uh, location on that point. So that's the first point. Uh, the second point, which I, another two points, which I like to show you, one of them is located right, if we have do 16, a bit laterally to do 16, just below the occipital protuberance, uh, about, two millimeters lateral in this area here, you can found uh, an area which is very, very sensitive. It is on bone, it's not on muscle. So it's hard tissue you meant to feel there. You'll feel that you're in a notch here on the po uh, posterior area of the bone. I mean, on the, of the head, on the inferior borders of the, of the, of the occiput bone. So that's another point. Okay, it's, it's kind of in line if you would go with the Huato Giagis, and it's a bit medial, it's between like the line of the Huato Giagi points, okay, and uh, do 16, okay, of the cervical spine uh, one and two. So it's right as you go onto the bone. That's right there, just below the occipital protuberance, which you see here. Okay, so that's uh, the second point. A third point, if up here we go to do 19, so you would go from do 19, approximately a centimeter and a half lateral, okay? And around, and just about from do 19, about a cent, like I said, centimeter and a half to up to between a centimeter. And look around this area here, you could found uh, another area which was very, very useful in uh, treating plantar fasciitis. Okay, so I'll show you in the uh, image uh, right now. Uh, another point which can be uh, another point that can be very very useful in treating plantar fasciitis is the isomototop. Okay, so iso isomototop. Okay, Is isomototop, which is located up here, okay, we have this whole somatotop which is covering all around the ear, okay? As you can see, it treats the whole body, this whole somatotop. It, it's very, very useful in treating musculoskeletal disorders. I spoke about it yesterday in the talk. I'll show, go into depth where this po point is located. But if you have the apex line, okay, which is right here, this apex from the apex goes up to do 20. So you would go about four centimeters above the ear, and then slightly lateral, okay, about two centimeters lateral, you found the area of the foot of the somatotop, and the point is needled from up to down, okay? That from up to down, 
you can uh, treat uh, plantar fasciitis. So just for a drawing board here, going to my drawing board. So I would go apex line, okay? So up to this point, it's about four centimeters, okay? And laterally about two centimeters lateral. And the point will be you know, from up to down, okay? And you look for a sensitive area here to treat that plantar fasciitis. Oh, that's the foot area of the eye uh, somatotop. So going to our images here. So first we'll have, I'll go back to my drawing board. Let's draw out the hairline, okay? So if we have in that extra foot point, if we have in the, this is the hairline, okay? And here would be located the zygomatic bone. Okay, so this is a zygomatic bone. Okay, so this is the borders of a zygomatic bone. Okay, so the point, that foot point will be located below the hairline on the, on the bone. Okay, now the needle in direction which is recommended is from, from anterior to posterior in this direction. You want to needle this point, okay, to uh, receive a better result. So that's that extra foot point. The next point which we'll speak about here is that if we have here, you can see the occipital protuberance. Okay, so down here, this is do 16. Okay, so we'll put the number 16 here. Okay, and as you come up with the, as you can see here, you between the, as you go up from do 16 about laterally, and about around up here, just below the occipital protuberance, you'll found a ditch. And in this ditch, you can find a very, very useful point for also treating plantar fasciitis okay, in the, on the scalp, very, very useful. And another point, if we have, here is do 16, do 19. So this is do 19, okay? So like I said, about a centimeter, so centimeter half lateral, approximately here. Okay, you'll find a sensitive area and that point will be treating uh, also very, very useful for using treating plantar fasciitis. This is actually what is called the K somatotop area of the foot of the Wynes A method. Okay, so that's the area of the foot. Like all these points are bilaterally. Like I said, you needle them epsilaterally. If I'm having a disorder on my left foot, these points that I showed you here will be treated on the left side. Now coming into eye somatotop, so I'm going back to my image here. So eye somatotop, so eye somatotop, go first to the uh, cervical spine. All this area here where the ear, ear, and the face would meet will be the cervical spine. This will be cervical one. This will be cervical seven. Okay. If I would fold my ear inwards, I would get to an apex line. Okay. So this would be my apex line. Okay. This will be my thoracic spine. Now the, the distance which I wish to multiply up here, I would take my ear. Okay. This is my ear from the apex down to the lobe, multiply this distance, and then place it up here on my uh, apex. And that will give me the distance of how much I need to go for the thoracic spine. Right up here is the temporal region, the borders of the temporalis muscle, okay? So here will be T T12, and here will be T1 down here. Okay, and then my arm will go right out. My hand will go right out from the root of my ear right here. Okay, will be my shoulder and my hand will go up here. Okay, and my foot, if I would go off the mastoid process, which is actually the lumbar spine, okay, go up of my mastoid process, I'll get to a divot here in the bone. 
okay, just below. That'll be my hip. And then my leg would shoot out like this in a slight angle. And then this would be the area of the foot. And this is why I'll needle it from up to down. Okay, now speaking about my lumbar spine, the lumbar spine is all this area of the mastoid bone. It's right below behind the ear. Okay, so think that you can see it. Up here will be the sacrum. Down here will be T1, I mean L1. Okay, so this is this eye somatotope, which is very, very useful in treating the heel spur. So you have this upper region. Erase, erase, so we can move to the next image. Okay, before, like I said, plantar fasciitis comes and uh, is not necessarily only a problem due to uh, the gastrocnemius muscle or the soleus muscle or that Achilles tendon, which is called in a plantar fasciitis, that might be a problem throughout the whole structure. So just to explain to you what I mean in this, I'm just gonna uh, stop sharing my screen. What I mean by this, I have, you know, I'm just going to stand further away and I want to show you. Okay, for example, I like to think about our uh, body is a whole net. Okay, it has a whole kinetic chain and everything is connected one to each other. I like to look at how our fascia tissue actually covers our whole body and get connects different regions and different parts of the body together. So, what I like to show you what happens. For example, I might be suffering for a heel spur in my uh, rock in my left foot. So, for taking for example that maybe I have a problem in my lower back or my my right hip, okay, which is causing let's say I'm pulling my clothes together here, some tension in this way and not allowing the fascia uh, sheets to glide one above another. And then, for example, just to see that if it's caught here, something is caught here. For example, I'm trying to move my shoulder. You can see my, I'm having disability in my shoulder. The whole shirt is getting stretched. The same time when I'm trying to raise my shoulder, I get a lot of stretch coming up from my ankle up towards my hip. Okay, so that's just, you understand how it's gonna influence this one side, but see how it influences the, the, the opposite side. For example, if I'm having anything touch, again there, I'm having a bit of, difficulty raising my shoulder, even though it's a bit easier. But at the same time, everything is pulling towards this side. So it's causing a lot of stretch throughout my left part of my body. And at the same time, it's also gonna cause my muscles and my uh, area of uh, area of, around my ankle and the plantar fascia to even stretch. And then it's gonna cause the stretching on the plantar fascia and it's gonna cause that uh, plantar fasciitis, that inflammation there in the area of the fascia. The same idea could be coming up if it comes to the shoulder and it pushes one side, you have tension on the other side, or even this side, then you're gonna have tension. We know the tension we have on the side, but also the opposite side, just to show you that everything is connected. So in these cases, sometimes I like to use the diagnosis, the YNSA uh, diagnosis of the thoracic spine, cervical spine, thoracic spine and lumbar spine, to locate where the problem is. And not necessarily I will use YNSA points, but I could also use body acupuncture or even massage to release those different areas where maybe the problem is occurring from. So this is why I like to show you the... What, what happened? Oh, yes. like to show you the elbow diagnosis and you can use the elbow diagnosis as a, as a reference to know where your problem is. So we have, uh, we have here my left, uh, my left uh, arm. Okay, we have my left arm. So the cervical spine region, if we, I'm just gonna draw out the epicondyle. So this is my lateral epicondyle. This is my medial epicondyle, and here I need my biceps tendon. Okay, so this would be my biceps tendon. Okay, and this is a cubicle line. So, as I fall from my, from my lateral epicondyle towards 
the center just fall from the bone towards the soft tissue, right about here. This will be the area of the cervical spine sensitivity. So if there's sensitivity in the cervical spine here, let's say on my left side, I know that I'm gonna have a problem in my cervical spine that might be causing the problem, for example, and then I'll treat the cervical spine on the left side. Okay, lumbar spine, if I have the lateral epicondyle, just fall from the lateral epicondyle to about, I mean the medial epicondyle slightly inwards again to soft tissue, I'm falling from the bone towards the cubicle line. This is gonna be the lumbar spine. So again, if the sensitivity here, uh, it's gonna show up in this diagnostic area. And then we have the thoracic spine. So if we have the cubicle line, okay, so, on the supinator muscle, which is about here, the, the supinator muscle, just slightly distal to the cubicle line is the area of the thoracic spine. And then palpate in there will give me information that I've got a problem with my thoracic spine. And of course you palpate bilaterally both sides. And according to the side where you've seen the uh, problem is, you uh, try and treat that uh, problem. So a lot of times when I'm treating plantar fasciitis, I use this as a diagnosis not necessarily only using it to uh, use minus eight points. So I have a, even a video for you so you can see the location. So this is the, the video of the location. So, so this is showing you the epicondyle. I'm just feeling out epicondyle and I just fall from the epicondyle. This is uh, again, my left arm and I'm palpating the area on the soft tissue just medially to the uh, lateral epicondyle. Okay, then I have the thoracic spine, which is on the supinator muscle. A bit, it is laterally to the biceps tendon. Okay, so as you can see, the, that'll give me the thoracic spine. Okay, and the lumbar spine is located inwards. Okay, that's the palpation direction and lack, uh, lack and the lat medial epicondyle, just fall from the medial epicondyle, that will be the area of the lumbar spine. I'm looking for sensitivity. So that's the diagnostic areas. Now I'll show you another video of how the palpation goes for the elbow diagnosis. Cervical spine. Thoracic spine and lumbar spine. This is the palpation. Now, when you palpate these areas, you do not wish to use more than one kilograms pressure, which is about two pounds, okay? And then you uh, identify that sensitivity uh, through that. You always start from a light pressure and always increase the pressure more and more. When you try to identify the sensitivity at the least pressure as possible, okay? So, that was our talk for today. We went through isomototop, which is very, very useful in musculoskeletal disorders. We went through the elbow diagnosis, which you can learn from it and use it in your clinic. Uh, it's a very helpful uh, tool I found in my toolbox to treat or know where the problem is coming with. Even if I'm not using YNSA, I can use it to treat, use or massage therapy, uh, uh, manipulations, cupping, or even use uh, body acupuncture. And at the same time, we went on other extra points from the YNSA method to treat different uh, areas of the body with of the plant directly for treating the plantar fasciitis, which are very, very useful. So thank you very much. Thank you for joining me. Uh, here is my contact information. I'm David, this is my contact information. You can feel free to contact me, send me an email if you have any questions. Have a good day, keep safe.